A guide through the formative assessment process. Module 4, Scoring. The mission of the Illinois Center for School Improvement is focused on building the capacity of school leadership and instructional teams to maintain high performing districts and high student achievement for all students. By the end of this module on scoring, you will be able to define what scoring means, explain how and why you should use a well-designed tool, such as answer keys, scoring guides, and rubrics to score many types of assessment. And also, you should be able to explain what distinguishes one tool from another. This information will enable you to effectively score student work, demonstrate the utility of effective scoring practices, and provide validity of assessment results. Scoring is one of five elements of assessment design that include alignment, rigor, precision, and bias. Scoring is very familiar to teachers because it is something they do on a daily basis, whether it is grading papers and quizzes or assigning grades and scores to projects and performance tasks. From formative tasks that teachers use daily to summative assessments that are used at the culmination of a unit of learning, there are a variety of assessments used during the course of instruction. And as such, there are different ways to score and effectively monitor student progress. Depending on the type of assessment, it is important that the right scoring tool is used to grade the item so that you have an effective way of knowing what students know and can do. For example, answer keys may be better suited for quick check-ins like a quiz, or an end of the unit test with selected response items such as multiple choice, matching, and true or false questions. We'll talk more about scoring these types of assessments later in this module. A rubric, on the other hand, may be, may be more suitable for a project or performance task item. Let's take a closer look. As stated before, having the right scoring tool ensures that teachers and students are getting the most out of the assessments that are used. Teachers can effectively evaluate students' progress and use that information for planning the content and format of subsequent lessons. They can also provide detailed feedback that can serve as motivation for students to improve because they know exactly what areas they need to work on. Common scoring tools include scoring guides, rubrics, answer keys, performance tasks, and checklists. This module will focus on the first three tools. We'll go over how these three tools can provide a concrete set of criteria to score student work. There are a variety of ways to score student work. Depending on the type and purpose of the assessment, you may choose to score assessments by yourself, with another teacher, or with a group of teachers like a professional learning team. Whatever method you choose, there are great benefits to having a well-planned process for scoring student work. Namely, it can save time in the grading process. You can also feel assured that your process is fair and consistent because you're able to clearly communicate the expectations, which helps students understand how their work is being graded and how best to prepare. Let's talk more about consistency and scoring. Consider this scenario. You're a part of a team of sixth grade English teachers. An essay is administered as a summative assessment in each classroom. The team has decided to exchange papers so that each student's essay is graded by two teachers. 
the final score will be the average of the two grades assigned. The assessment is given on a Friday and teachers collect and exchange the papers agreeing to complete the grading by the following week. Take a minute to think, why might this method be ineffective in providing the most accurate information about what a student knows and can do? First, you may unintentionally score student work on a weekend at home differently from the work that you score on a Monday or Tuesday during a planning period at school. You may compare one student's work to another's. You and your peers may apply different standards to the essays. For example, should you take points off for incorrect writing mechanics? Is it important for the essay to have a clear thesis statement or for students to cite evidence from the text? Without this level of agreement beforehand, students' scores may not only depend on their mastery of the relevant standard, but also on who happened to score their work. Although you and your peers read each essay carefully, a teacher may miss an opportunity to identify specific skills a student not in their class is struggling with. As a result, the assessment will not only measure what the students know and can do, but it will unfortunately also measure when and in what order the assessment was scored. Whatever scoring tool you decide to use, always ensure that it is appropriate for the assessment being scored, well designed, and provides accurate information. If you are collaborating with other teachers to design a scoring tool, make sure that everyone is applying the same requirement. A collaborative review of student work can help guarantee that you are assessing student mastery consistently across different classrooms. Let's now describe the three tools and how you can use them. Answer keys provide the correct answer to an assessment item. Answer keys are typically used with selected and constructed response items to score a correct or incorrect student response. They can be as simple as the correct letters to multiple choice items or the correct words for fill in the blank items. An answer key can also be an exemplar student response to a short answer item. A well-designed answer key explains why each choice is incorrect or correct and provide the rationale for an exemplar response. This requires a bit more than a typical answer key that highlights only the correct answer. Taking the time to think about the rationale for the answers as you write your assessments can help you diagnose common student errors, which can help in making adjustments to instructional strategies and plan specific areas for re-engagement. The multiple choice item provides an example of this type of, of detailed answer key. The item asks students to read the poem about the moon and nighttime, then answer the question about the poem's first line, the moon has a face like the clock in the hall. What is the meaning of the simile used in this line? Is it A, the moon ticks like a clock, B, the moon is facing the hall, C, the moon is as round as a clock, or D, the moon moves around the hall? The answer key explains that students who select answers B or D do not understand the context of the poem. Students who select answer A are likely thinking about the clock ticking. Answer C is the correct answer because the moon is being compared to the shape of a clock. Answer key is designed with this level of specificity can provide details as to why students answered the item the way they did. For example, if a large percentage of students selected choices B or D, a re-engagement lesson can be planned to help students understand the context of poems and other texts. It is understood that this level of detail cannot be done for every assessment. The most important thing to know is that writing an answer key with rationales for each answer can uncover details about students learning and provide valuable information for how to plan subsequent lessons to address students needs. 
Another tool commonly used to score assessments is scoring guides. They assign points to different levels of student performance and are useful because they allow students to earn points for partial mastery of standards. A scoring guide also ensures that students who earn full points have mastered the relevant standard or standards rather than simply guessing the correct answer, which students sometimes do. You'll find that scoring guides are a useful tool for constructed response items and also performance tasks. A well-designed scoring guide will reference the standards and or skills being addressed in the item and sometimes they include an exemplar answer. In the constructive response example above, students can earn zero, one, or two points based on how well they demonstrate their ability to illustrate their thinking to solve a word problem with whole numbers using multiplication. A student will earn two points if his or her response shows an accurate understanding of the multiplication scenario and provides an illustration to support their reasoning. The student earns one point if he or she provides a correct answer with an illustration that does not support their answer, or the student provides an incorrect answer with the correct and accurate illustration of the multiplication scenario. The guide shows that a student will earn zero points if he or she provides an incorrect answer and no illustration. An exemplar for students that receive the highest score is provided. Rubrics is the last scoring tool in this module. Rubrics are similar to scoring guides because they articulate levels of performance in relation to standards and other expectations. Unlike scoring guides, which describe how students earn points or credit for their answers, rubrics assign students ratings based on how well their responses meets performance levels. We use rubrics to evaluate when a student has reached or exceeded an expected level of performance or what he or she needs to do to make progress. Rubrics are typically used with performance tasks and portfolio assessments. With performance tasks, students perform a task to demonstrate success with a particular skill. Portfolios contain a collection of student work products as exemplars of a student's progress towards a desired goal or standard. A well-designed rubric has three parts. Dimensions, performance levels, and descriptors. Rubric dimensions are discrete traits that you plan to assess. Each dimension should align with the standard and they should be distinct from one another. In the science project rubric example provided, three dimensions for scoring are included. Students will be evaluated on content knowledge, application, and ability to articulate what they have learned about the science content. Each dimension has a precise explanation or descriptor of the objective or goal for student learning. A well-designed rubric includes three to six performance levels. Most commonly, the highest level of the rubric indicates that students meet or exceed the standard. The levels below indicate the depth of students' knowledge approaching the standards, and the lowest level indicates that the student is not meeting the standard. Each performance level should contain a precise explanation or descriptor of student performance. Each descriptor should be discrete from the performance levels below and above it. For example, the level four descriptor for the knowledge dimension reads, the student uses a complete and correct description of scientific terms, facts, concepts, principles, theories, and methods. The student has demonstrated a thorough and accurate knowledge of the subject matter. This explanation is discrete from the level two descriptor in the same dimension, which reads that student descriptions of scientific terms, facts, concepts, principles, theories, and methods are somewhat complete and correct. Make sure that the, that the descriptions of student performance in the highest category are aligned with the relevant standards. 
The goals of this module included being able to define what scoring means, being able to explain how and why you should use well-designed tools such as answer keys, scoring guides, and rubrics to score various assessments using the classroom, and to explain what distinguishes one tool from another. Next steps include what conversations you will take back to your school or district as to how to use this scoring tool to ensure that you have a well-designed process for decision-making in scoring students' progress. The following references will be useful if you'd like to look up more information on scoring and developing scoring tools for your classroom. This concludes Module 4, Scoring.